Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray him to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. On the Passover, it is typical for a child to ask the question, why is this night different from all other nights? Indeed, the Passover, which is celebrated in the home, is an intimate time for asking hard questions. And when Jesus gathered with his disciples for a Passover meal, they too had some very hard questions to ask and Jesus tried to provide answers. We can think about the resonance of those Passover elements, how the lamb shank on the table, which came from an unblemished lamb, took on new significance for Jesus as he recognized that he would be that Passover sacrifice. We can think too how the bitter herbs on the table would have tasted all the more bitter, how the bowl of salt water would have represented all the more their tears of that night, and the Passover bread, the unleavened bread of haste, would have taken on new significance as Jesus blessed and broke it. And when he took the Passover cup and blessed it and said that this henceforth would be taken in remembrance of him. Those Jews who dined with him that night knew that their Passover meal would forever mean something else. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you that I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after the supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood.
you are those who have stood by me in my trials. And I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm. This night is different from all other nights. This night is different from all other times that we have celebrated Maundy Thursday. Tonight, we are in our own homes, just as Jews have long been when they have celebrated the Passover meal. So we are with those that we love and we are celebrating the transformation of that Passover into the Lord's Supper and how we become the body of Christ. We remember how Jesus on that night took the Passover bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, and said, this is my body, which is broken for you, as often as you take this, do so in remembrance of me. And he took the cup, gave thanks and blessed it, and said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. We invite you now in the privilege of your own home to celebrate the Lord's Supper, to take and eat, to take and drink, and to be blessed. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. We 
we thank you for joining us tonight, and we wish you ever blessing. May the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all tonight and every night. Amen. <laughs>